Hello, everybody. Welcome back. And in this video, I want to show you something that got me really, really, really excited when I first started learning Node. And hopefully, you get just as excited as I am as we go through this video and then do a little bit of a challenge. It's going to blow your mind. At least it did for me when I first started learning to code. Now, in the previous video, we talked about something called the FS module that comes with Node. And this is something that is built into Node. And the way we get it is, well, we just do const. Well, actually, we need a file first. So let's do a touch script.js. We'll create a new script. Perfect. All right, we can close that because we don't need this. And in the script.js that we have in this folder, awesome Node, we can have const fs equals require fs. So fs here stands for file system. And if you have node downloaded, you have access to this by just doing this. Now, why is this so exciting and so useful? Well, because fs, file system, allows you to access our file system, which again, doesn't sound that exciting, but let me demonstrate what happens and why this is useful. So bear with me here. I'm going to do a bit of coding, and then I'm going to explain exactly what is happening. So we're going to use the fs read file. It's pretty self-explanatory. We have a blank parameter. And then we have error for error data. And this is an arrow function. So the second parameter is a function. And this function has either error or data. So for the error, I'm going to say if there is an error, we'll just throw error. Or we can just say console.log error to really shove it into their face. All right. Um, now, if there wasn't an error, we'll just say, well, we'll just say console.log. And we'll just log out whatever data is. All right, let me add the semicolons and save that. So what did I just do here? I just imported the FS module that comes with Node. And the FS module has a method, read file, that, well, it looks like it reads some sort of a file. The first parameter is actual file that we want to do, so the path to the file which we don't have yet. So let's create one. I'm going to say new file, and we'll call it hello.txt. And with hello.txt, we'll do our classic hello there. And ex exciting stuff, so exclamation marks. We save that, and now we can say that we want to read the file hello text from the current directory hello.txt. Now, this read file method is going to find the file with the path. OK, so here's, here it is. It's going to read it. And then if there's an error, it's going to spit out an error. If there's some sort of data and everything's successful, it's going to speed up, spit out data. With the way we can run this file in Node, well, well, first I have to save it. We'll say node script.js, enter. And I got buffer. Hmm. What is that? And that is because we have to do a little bit of encoding. And what that means is if I do this to string, let's just try this and show you what I mean. And I get hello there. So the read file reads the file as the name suggests. And it's going to spit out whatever it's reading, data. Now, why do we have to put in the to string here? Just so you know, to string does something by default. If you don't add anything, it's going to use the encoding called UTF-8. And UTF-8 is a type of encoding. Let's just run this to make sure that this is still the same. Yep. 
So UTF-8 is a type of encoding that we have that's pretty standard with HTML5 and pretty much everybody uses it on the web. It's a way for us to have characters, whether they're Latin characters, you know, ABCs, or we have Korean, Japanese, Chinese characters. They're all represented by a number. And UTF-8 is a way of encoding these numbers to make sure that we can read them. It's actually quite a complex subject. Um, so I recommend the Wikipedia page that talks about UTF-8. For now, just know that UTF-8 is a type of encoding that is pretty much standard across the web. You might have also seen ASCII. And ASCII was, before UTF-8 existed, ASCII was mainly for Latin-based languages, so the ABCs. And UTF expanded that to include many more from many more languages from different parts of the world. All right, now a little bit of a tangent that we didn't need to go on. But as you can see over here, we have hello there, and we're able to read the file. All right, very cool. Let me just add one other method to your repertoire. Let's also do fs dot read file sync. And read file sync works a little bit different than the previous one. And sync stands for synchronous. So let's see what happens. I'm going to put in hello.txt once again. And this time I'm just going to leave it like that. And let's just say that this is going to equal the file. And we'll just console.log the file. All right, let me save that and run this. All right, we know once again that we got this because we need to do to string. So let's do that. I'm going to to, oops, to string. I'm going to save and run this again. All right, I get hello there. But just to distinguish them, let's just say that this is number one, and this is number two. I save this, run this again, and whoa, what just happened? We have one coming after the two. Hmm. Now, if you've watched the asynchronous synchronous video in this course, then you might understand what's happening here. If not, I'm going to do a quick synopsis, but I do recommend you check out that video. Now, read file is asynchronous. And that's why it has something called the callback function. It is saying, hey, I'm going to read this file. And when I'm done with it, you just keep going on with your business and keep reading line three, line four, line five, line six, all the way to 11. When I'm done, I'll let you know and I'll either give you an error or some data. Read file sync, which is synchronous, says, I'm going to read this file. Don't do anything, just wait here. When I'm done, I'm going to assign it to file and then you can keep going. So as you can see here, what happens is we read the file and because this is in asynchronous, it's going to run this and come to line 10 and run the FS read file sync. And the read file sync, because it's saying, hey, wait until I'm done this, is going to print out hello there. And then the asynchronous code is going to say, hey, I finished reading the file. Here's the data. And it prints out down over here. Again, I really, really recommend you check out the asynchronous synchronous video. But for now, hopefully that makes sense. Now, looking at this, which one should you use? Well, for a simple case like this, we can use whichever we want. But you may see a problem with the second one, especially if we're building something like a server. If we have a massive file that has something more than hello there, well, if we're doing read file sync, what happens is we're going to 
halt or pause the execution of our file and it's going to read the entire text and the program is just going to be waiting for that to finish versus the read file which says hey you can keep going ahead I'll let you know when I'm done with this so when you're building a server and let's say an express server with routes well in that case we want to use read file if we're reading any sort of a file or a text file whatever it is because that way we're not blocking the execution and the program can keep doing things all right so one last time just to clarify things i'm going to label these as async and sync so once again if we run this we have sync and async hello there but very cool we're able to read a file in both instances which was kind of cool let me show you a few more of these and then tell you exactly why this is so exciting and how we can use it to do some really exciting things. So let's say the hello there text is kind of boring and we want to add to it. Well, we can do something like this. FS append file. We give it the file we want to append. So in this case, it's hello.txt and by the way if this doesn't exist it'll actually just create the file for us and the second parameter will say what we want to add so let's say we also wanted to add maybe a space and that says this is so cool another exclamation mark and finally third parameter takes it an error and this error will just say that if there is an error, let me make this smaller so you can see. We'll just say if there is an error, we'll just console.log. Oh, cannot type. Error. All right, perfect. So let's run this and see what happens. I'm going to run the script. And I get hello there, hello there, because these ran first. But if I go to hello text, look at that. We just wrote to a file. And now we have, this is so cool. So if I run this again, and let me clear this just so we have more space. Look at that, I get, hello there, this is so cool. Hello there, this is so cool. If we go back to the hello.txt file, oh boy, we've added even more, this is so cool, text. So that's pretty cool. We just added a few more lines to our file let me remove that just so it doesn't get too annoying I'm going to save it and come back all right so we learned the append let me just comment this out so that it doesn't interfere with any of the other ones let's do a write this time and let's create some space here so we can see with the right, as you can imagine, right file. And we'll just say that this file will be called by.txt, very original naming by myself. And we'll just say sad to see you go. And once again, we'll take an error. And this error will say if error console.log error all right so let's save that run the file or run the script and look at that by dot text just got added if we click on it we have sad to see you go we just created a new text file very very cool by the way just so you know what happens if let's say I misspell the read file and now it's hell.txt. Well, if I run this, I'll get an error and you can see that the because it errors out, I get the error message error with a lot of R's. All right, a little bit of a segue there, but just in case people were asking or you were thinking about that. All right, Whew. 
I'm getting tired. So let's do one last one, and then I'm going to tell you exactly why this is so cool. Um, the final one we're going to do, again, let's make some space here, is going to be the delete. So with the delete, we can do fs.unlink. I know it's a, the name is a little bit off here, but unlink, and we'll say the by text. And notice that I was able to just do by.text here, but just to keep it consistent, I'll just say by text with the dot slash before it. And with this one, again, if there's any errors, we'll just log. Oops, I did. I forgot to do the if. Perfect. Now, let's see what happens here. And just for fun, let's just add a console.log here after it's done deleting. And we'll say inception because we're saying bye to the by text. Mind blown. All right, let's run this. I'm going to say, and we'll comment out the write file here because we don't need to write it. We already have the by text. Let me save. And now if you look at the by text, let's see what happens here when I run the script. Look at that. The by text was just removed. Inception just happened. Awesome. So that was very exciting for me. Hopefully it was for you as well. But why is this exciting? Well, because now we're able to use programming in JavaScript outside of just web browsers and outside of just building websites and servers. What we can do now with this knowledge is we can make our lives easier. You can think of cases maybe you want to read an Excel file. And there are things that you can use using read file and using NPM modules that you can read, let's say, columns in an Excel and do some math. Or maybe you have an Excel sheet with all these emails and you want to send out an email to, let's say, 100 people on this list, but you also don't want to be caught spamming people by the Google filter saying that, hey, this account is spamming because they just sent 100 emails in two minutes. Well, using something like Node, you can create perhaps something that every six hours sends out five emails. Another thing you can do, if you had a robot, for example, something similar to a file system, instead of having reading from the file, you can read from the robot, maybe through wireless, maybe through wires, and get an input of some data that the robot has. Maybe it detected a cat. Well, using that input, you can do something, you can respond, maybe send you an email saying that the robot just detected a cat and send that email out or send that output. And that's what we call input output, where you're getting an input from another source, another machine, and then you are also outputting something for consumption. That is really, really exciting because it opens up the world where you can create tools for yourself. You can automate things. You can literally do anything that your mind can think of. And I know this is still early and you're still at the beginning of your developer career, but this is the first step into understanding how you can use programming to solve problems and make your life more efficient or maybe just a little bit more fun. So in the next video, we're going to do something fun. We're going to use what we've just learned, and we're going to help Santa out on a coding challenge. I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.